Hello everyone, my name is Jed Wallace, Senior Technical Marketing Manager with Coesity. In this video, we'll take a look at Coesity Net Backup self-defending platform, which is designed to provide comprehensive data protection and security solutions for enterprises. We'll focus on how it integrates advanced features such as multi-factor authentication and multi-person authorization to enhance security and ensure critical actions are protected against unauthorized access. But why is that important? By leveraging Coesity Net Backup self-defending platform, adaptive MFA and MPA features, organizations can enhance their security posture by preventing unauthorized access and ensuring that critical actions require approval from multiple authorized personnel. With that said, let's dive into the demonstration. Let's look at how easy it is to enable MFA in the Net Backup web console. But first, let's go ahead and sign in. So I'm logging in with my username and password. Now we're prompted for our one-time passcode for MFA. So we'll go ahead and enter that and hit confirm. Now that we're logged in, let's go ahead and click in the upper right hand corner on the user profile icon. Now, if we click configure multi-factor authentication, we can see MFA is already enabled, but for your environment, you would click enable and then scan the provided QR code with your authenticator of choice, such as Microsoft or Google authenticators, for example. And then you'd provide the one-time code and then click configure. By implementing adaptive MFA, NAP Backup can ensure that not only authorized users can access sensitive data and perform critical operations, it also significantly reduces the risk of unauthorized access and potential data breaches. Moving on, let's look at adaptive multi-person authorization, known as MPA for abbreviation. First off, what exactly is adaptive MFA? Adaptive multi-person authorization, MPA, is a security feature used to ensure that critical system changes or actions require approval from multiple authorized individuals. The feature is particularly useful for preventing malicious or accidental changes to the system. For example, Actions such as data deletions, policy changes, or system configuration updates can be configured to require approval from multiple users. Let's look at how to enable MPA by going to detection reporting and then anomaly detection. Now we'll click on anomaly detection settings and select system anomaly detection configuration. By expanding the risk engine based anomaly detection, we can see we have several options to choose from. First is detect suspicious image expiration. The image expiration rule, it detects if images are expired by a user in an unusual or a suspicious manner and generates an alert. Next is detect unusual sign in. This generates an alert if a user signs in at a unusual time. So if it's off hours and they're not supposed to be logging in, it'll generate an alert. Then next is the detect unusual updates to policy. This detects if a policy is being modified or deleted by a user and then generates an alert. Secure critical operations. This ensures MFA or multi-factor authentication is configured on an individual's user account. And then last is detect possible session hijack, which detects if a session token is being used by a different IP address. And if I click down here under rule-based anomaly detection, this attacks anomalies using NetBackup's anomaly detection rules. So with that said, let's run through a few scenarios to see how MPA works in real time. In scenario one, let's look at detect suspicious image expiration by expiring the last full backup of a client and see what happens by going to catalog and then searching for a client's last full backup. Here we can see we already have some backups listed. So I'm gonna select the first one and then I'm gonna click on expire. Now I'm gonna click expire and let's see what happens. We could see a ticket was given for the operation we just performed. So let's switch over to our MPA admin logged into the console and look and see what the ticket looks like. So let me go ahead and hit refresh. Okay, so now if we click on the ticket, we're going to want to review. So now that we review the ticket, here you could see 
as an MPA administrator, we can choose to approve or reject the operation depending on if we think it's legitimate or not. So let's just assume it's not legitimate and reject the operation. So I'm going to enter the ticket number listed and hit reject. Next, let's look at detect unusual sign-in, which generates an alert if a user signs in at an unusual time. By clicking edit next to the rule, we can enable MPA to generate a ticket which holds the user's sign-in if a user signs in at an unusual time. To show you how this works, we'll log into NetBackup Web Console with a different user. So if I bring over a new window and we try to log in with a different user and I'll click sign in, let's see what happens. So as we could see, it actually created a ticket, which will need to be approved or rejected to allow this person to log on uh, after hours. So if we go back over to the other console, we'll have to approve the ticket. So if we go show all, we should have a pending ticket, which we do. And what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and review ticket. We'll type in the ticket ID and let's go ahead and hit approve. So now that user will be be logged on and their session will be complete. Now let's go back and look at the risk engine based anomaly detection by going to anomaly detection. And then we'll go back to the anomaly detection settings and then system anomaly detection configuration. And we want to look at detect unusual updates to policies. Now, if I click edit here, you could see we can, we have the setting set to generate multi-person authorization ticket if a policy is being modified or deleted in an unusual manner. So to show how that works, let's go and edit an existing policy by going to protection and then policies. And we have a policy here named ETC. Let's go ahead and put a checkbox next to it. And then we're going to go ahead and edit and we'll make a, just a small change to see if we can get an alert to generate. So I'm going to enable granular recovery and hit save. Now let's see if an MPA ticket is created as we could see it is. So let's go ahead and hit view details. You can see that the ticket was created and now is pending for the MPA approver to either reject or approve this policy change. Moving on in this next scenario, we'll look at secure critical operations, which is used to protect global security settings and API key generation with multi-factor authentication. So by heading over to the settings and clicking global security, we'll click on secure communications here. Let's try to change one of these security settings and see if we're prompted for MFA in order to make the change. So I'm going to uncheck that setting it's save and see we're prompted with the MFA for the one time password. So let's go ahead and get that and enter it in and see if our, our change is approved. So I'm going to hit confirm. And indeed you could see the security setting is now disabled. In this last scenario, we'll look at detect possible session hijack which detects if there's a possible user session hijack by a malicious source. To simulate the possible hijack, we need to use an existing session's information and try to log in from a different system separate from net backup. Let's see what happens when we initiate a login from an ex with an existing session from a different interface. So I'm going to go ahead on the back end and I'm going to send a command to simulate that. I'm going to hit send. And then let's see what happens to our session. So if I come back over here, let's just click around. As you can see here, it's not, it's knocked us out of our existing session. Let's give it a second. You'll see that we are booted out completely. Let's log back into MBO web console real quick. I'm going to go ahead and put in my MFA code, hit confirm. Wait until we're logged in here. Now we're going to go back to anomaly detection under detection reporting. 
And then if we go over to system anomalies, we can see we have the alert for detect possible session hijack. So in summary, we showed you how organizations can leverage Cohesity Net Backup's self-defending platform, which integrates advanced features such as multi-factor authentication and multi-person authorization to enhance security and ensure that critical actions are protected against unauthorized access. Thank you for watching and have a great day.